I didn't do a vlog last week, did I? No, I left you guys in the lurch, the core fans uh, of the channel. <laughs> left in the lurch with no vlog. Reason I didn't, I wasn't feeling particularly well. And um, I was prepping the cube for Forge Action Day at Castle King. I said in the second of the Forge videos uh, that we released, I said I'd had a blast. It's not entirely true. Um, there were very good things at Forge Action Day, but I fear that there were certain actions that were badly organized by Castle Coombe itself. Um, now I didn't show, and I won't show any of the crashes, the incidents that happened on track at Forge Action Day, especially the really, really bad one. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not putting that out in just the hope of getting views. I think, I think it's not respectful, so I'm not going to put it out. Um, I don't know who's involved. I can't ask them if they mind. I don't think it's respectful. But the reason that there were so many incidents. It seemed to sort of spiral out of control. Like the first one I noticed, there was a couple of near misses. There was a couple of sort of R53s dueling that were, you know, quite getting quite close together. And then another R53 with another car. There was a lot of, of wannabe race drivers who didn't understand their cars and didn't understand the other cars that are out on track, which is always something that could potentially happen at a track day. Of course, of course that could always happen, especially when it's a track event at a big gathering. Unlike JDM Coombe last year, you know, the people who are out on track at that, all of the cars pretty much are JDM. So you look at a Honda, and you've got a good idea of how that Honda is going to respond around the track, whether you own one or not. You know, you know about VTEC, you know about high revving. If it's a, if it's an EP3, you know it's going to handle corners pretty well. If it's an FN2, not so much. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if you're in a Nissan, a big GTR, you know that's going to have a lot of power. So on the straights, you know that you'd have to change your race line. That's my assumption, at least. I've not been on track. But having watched that, that's the assumption that I would make. Having a whole heap of different cars from different manufacturers in different states of, of dress at Forge Action Day, uh, it was a bit of a disaster at times. And, you know, that first car that went off that I no noted it had gone off was a Saab, a very track-inspired Saab with a uh, front splitter that could slice off ankles without much effort whatsoever. That car came off, and from that moment, it seemed... Like the management of those track times, the you know letting people go out on track, booking those track slots, went a bit shit. Um, from from the outside looking in, it did appear that because people were having to wait longer, so they weren't getting on the track at the times they booked to get on track. Because that Saab goes off, it took about forty minutes, maybe 30, 30, 40 minutes to get that off the car off the track for other cars to go and be on the track it seemed to to sort of instead of saying to people look you know you're not going to be on track for a while we can refund the money to you and you know or we're going to have to whoever booked early times the late times we're not going to be able to fulfill that that track ticket so you're going to have to you know we'll get give you a refund and just hopefully next time it won't be an issue because that knocked it all back and so what then happened was that it seemed that there were way more cars on track at any one time than there would normally be. Now, I haven't been to Forge Forge Action Day before. I've not been to an Action Day before. I've been to JDM Coombe, not been to one of the Action Days. So I'm guessing, and from some, and from hearing from other people who generally, regularly go to track days and, um, and you know, partake in track days, they, they were saying that there was a lot, like too many, cars out on track at any one time and having a lot of a lot of drivers that you know were thinking race car more than actually I need to drive within my limit maybe I shouldn't be holding back this lot of cars it created it created a really weird vibe not only on track but a really weird vibe around Castle Coombe itself it, it 
it's hard to put my finger on it, but it, it did feel a little bit, there wasn't a huge like load of arrogance being portrayed by people. That's not right. But it felt like it wasn't a party atmosphere. It wasn't a, like a really woo sort of atmosphere. It was very subdued at points, especially and understandably after the really nasty BMW crash. Now I've watched the clip several times. I would say the BMW was at fault from watching it back a few times. But again, I'm not a race driver. I. I'm looking at that and going, well, it looked like the BMW, if you've seen the footage, you've got an EP3 here, you've got another car here, and the BMW goes in front, cuts across from one side of the track in front of this car, and then goes to take the inside line of the EP3. When there really wasn't that much space, it then clips the EP3, spins up into the air, lands somehow not hitting another car, and then spins a lot and it's quite devastating it's not a nice watch it's not like you know it's not a car crash where you, you know there's a deserve it scale it, it's like oh fuck man that's dark and that held everything back even longer and then it seemed like there were even more cars out on track and then nearly every session there seemed to be some kind of incident i i just kind of thought what they've done is instead of feeling what's happened is that whoever's organized the track aspect of that they've they've gone oh we're not going to refund people fuck that they've been waiting people have been waiting they're desperate to go on track let's just let them go on track and they didn't really think about the, the further consequences of having more cars with drivers that have varying degrees of experience going out together and driving fast around a track that just there wasn't any incidents at JDM Coom in October, and there was a lot of track sessions. There wasn't a lot of track sessions because of all the incidents at uh, Forge Action Day. So I had a really good time with the people I was with, and it was great to see um, Rob from Robster VTEC and, uh, and Drew from Modfix. Like, it was nice having a little nap with those guys. Got to hang out with Sean, my mate, my Irish mate that uh, was in some of the videos from the early days of when I when we both had our 53s um you know Ed was there with Luca and it was great having a wander with Ed you know we didn't get much on camera and what we did get was ruined by wind but um <laughs> it was it was a really from that point of view it was nice and it was you know the fact that the cube won you know we we're on the cargo culture stand the cube won like sort of car of the day or whatever um I, I can't remember which is bad I can't quite remember the exact title of the of the well done you've done really well um you know it, it did look good I mean the cube looks great at the moment it looks very dirty but that's because I've driven well over 700 miles this week so the cube is dirty the weather's been bad um but you know that part of it was amazing but the track component of Forge Action Day was a bit of a shambles. There wasn't, there wasn't, I don't think there was enough food stands there. And I mean, I, I already had packed food. I didn't need any, but I was watching the queues and the queues were huge. And I didn't think there was really that many people there compared to JDM Coom in October, especially in the morning. It was dead. Like I was walking around with um, uh, Charlotte and Zav and Jamie and, you know, others. Uh, the invisible woman i was i was walking around with those guys um and it was there was loads of cars cars were filling space but there weren't lots of people and there weren't lots of people watching on track you walk around and there weren't it wasn't like there was loads of people i don't think many people that were just there to you know for the day they weren't showing their car they were literally you know just a punter let's say um i don't know if they were even allowed in before the afternoon because it didn't feel like it it seemed to get busy at about half three and that's when a lot of the cars started driving off but people in the in the venue it was odd it was fun and it was nice and i would go again it was just a shame that there was i personally think a little bit of mismanagement with the amount of cars on track at any one time i, I just think i get why but at the same time you know safety should be paramount and and the problem is that at, at events like that, you, you do have a lot of different cars. You've got a lot of different expectations. You've got a lot of different ability drivers. Like if I went on track at that, 
I, I've never been on track before. No matter how I rate myself down country lanes in whatever car, I don't, I've not been on track before. And so I would be holding at the back and letting everybody pass me and just getting the feel of driving around the track. Um, there were people that had very powerful cars and they were great down the straights but had no idea about how to corner. And that ruins it for the people that do. And I just think having more cars on track with more drivers that are potentially like that, and then, you know, the drivers that are proper tracks, like track focused, you, you, you've got people doing the right thing, but it could be the wrong thing in the context of someone not knowing what this proper professional track driver is doing. And it was just a bit of a shambles, really. That component of it, a bit of a shambles. But, you know, bought myself a Deadly brand uh, hoodie with a sloth on it. And uh, I, I, I'm going to wear that soon. Representing Super Square today. Uh, Jay and uh, Super Square sponsor the channel. And um, that's really nice. I mean, I paid for this myself. This wasn't a freebie from Super Square. Um, I bought this before Jay came on board. So that's always good. <laughs> and the stickers that are on the cube. But, you know, that's because I'm not there fishing for stuff. I'd rather just, you know, if people want to be involved, cool, be involved. If you don't want to be involved, don't be involved. If you don't like how I drive a cube, don't, you, you know, don't watch the video. You know, keep your thoughts to yourself. You know, I haven't done a vlog for two weeks and that's why it's now over 13 minutes. So, you know, enjoy, enjoy the ride. Um, <laughs> but more footage coming soon. You know, we've got more cube stuff coming out. We've got more micro stuff. We've got my new car. Hopefully by the end of September, we'll be, we'll be, filmed at least ed's new car that is a rust bucket that will that'll be on the channel sooner rather than later too and hopefully we get some more viewers cars on and um, we've we've had a few offers and i'm really up for it it's just about finding the time to go and do it with both ed and myself so you know lots of content coming we're not gonna we're not gonna sleep on anything i might take a couple of weeks off in a, a couple of months time who knows trying to put out between two and three videos a week is quite tiring especially when i work a fairly intensive job psychologically at least <laughs> um, <laughs> Monday to Friday so finding time is always a little bit of a premium but you know when you do you do um, so yeah forge action day was really good could have been better could have been a bit more sensible about the track component of it especially after the first couple of incidents uh, and that's what I'm talking about you know Rest of the week, how's it been? Yeah, it's been all right. I felt a bit up and down. Um, the weather's been up and down. I've driven a lot. I love the cube. Don't want to get rid of the cube. Yeah, that's the week. Mm.